Notice in the previous chapter, what we did was to work with a quadratic equation and did quite a lot with that. And then, in fact, we turned to the quadratic formula. And now we're going to continue this idea of the quadratic uh, polynomial. And in fact, we like to talk about the quadratic function, OK? And remember, what we, if we were to think in terms of a function as f of x, then it's going to be equal to something. In this case, let's talk about ax squared plus bx plus c, where, of course, a is not equal to 0. And every time we talk about a function, we have some domain. And the domain of x, let's agree, is going to be over what set of numbers? Over the set of, Don? Real numbers. Over the set of real numbers. And the range in this case, then, is going to be that set of elements, which will be the second element of our ordered pair. Isn't that right? And I think probably the best way for me to say it is to simply write ax squared plus bx plus c, whatever that number happens to be for any given value of x. All right? Now, what I'd like to do is to take this perhaps one step at a time. And notice that our numbers a, b, and c are constants. And let's take special cases of these constants and make their graphs and see what will happen to the, so the, the corresponding quadratic function in each case. All right? And in fact, that's what we'll do in today's lesson. Let's look at a number of graphs. Here we have in this picture, we have uh, y is equal to x squared is what we might think of as a standard position. And our solid line will represent this. Now, if we then were to take that graph and sort of push it up two units, for example, I think you will see this dotted line as we have it here, which will be a graph. Now, what then would be the equation for this uh, dotted line as we have right here? Can anybody just look at that and think about our general case here, Don? y is equal to x squared plus 2. y, then, is going to be equal to x squared plus 2. Now, notice here that the number a happens to be 1, and the number c is 2. And in fact, the coefficient b must be what number? In this case that we have here, it must be uh, 0. Is that right? Now, similarly, if we then were to take our y equals x squared curve and simply uh, translate it uh, downward, five units, what then is going to be the equation of, uh, of this graph as we see it right here, Richard? y equals x squared minus 5. y then is going to be equal to x squared minus 5. So it looks like this constant that we are adding or subtracting in each case is going to have the effect of uh, translating our graph in a vertical fashion. Is that right? Moving it up and down. By the way, we have already in the past talked about this line that we see here, which happens to be the y-axis. And we have given it a special name. And does anyone remember what that is, Bill? It's the axis of symmetry. We refer to, uh, in this case, it's the y-axis as the axis of symmetry. All right. And uh, the fact that our curve is concave up, as we see it here. By the way, we have been giving this name, this curve, a special name. And does anybody remember what that is from uh, our previous work? Uh, Doug, does anyone happen to remember the name of this graph, Malcolm? Parabola. It's called a parabola, P-A-R-A-B-O-L-A. -A -A. This is called a parabola. And notice that in each case in our picture that we have here, our parabola is going to be concave up. Let's use that phrase. It's going to be concave upward. And therefore, we're going to have what? At each of these points, right here at 2, 0, 2, the origin 0, 0, and at 0, negative 5, we call this a vertex point. And in fact, our vertex is going to be, in this case, Doug, the minimum. a minimum. We're going to have a minimum in each case. Well, let's try to generalize this idea of adding some number to x squared, to the graph of y equals x squared. And here we have a picture in example two in which we have a parabola in which it's going to, our axis of symmetry is still the y-axis. And it then is going to have a minimum point at uh, y equals k. And just looking at this and from what we have just said, who can give us the equation of this graph as we have it here, a, a general equation? Tim? y equals x squared plus k. y then is going to be equal to x squared plus k. And that number k, again, is going to have the effect of moving the, the graph in a vertical fashion up or down. And if k is positive, it's greater than 0, then it's going to push it up. And of course, if k is negative, it's then going to bring it down. Well, let's now turn to a second idea. And looking at graph number 3 here, we have a number of uh, graphs here, certainly. And again, let's look at y is equal to x squared, our solid line as we see it right here. Now, if we were to multiply each side, that is the number x squared by, say, 2, 
the net effect of that number two then is going to have the tendency to narrow the graph. Is that right? Because if we were to say come out here when x is one, one squared is one and y equals x squared is right here, but then two times one is two is going to give us this point. When x is two, two squared is four, but twice four then is eight is going to give us this point. And I think you will agree that this then is going to give us a much more narrow graph as we see it right here as opposed to y is equal to one-half times x squared, the one-half factor is going to have a tendency to do what to the graph? It's going to make it, Doug? Wider. A little wider. Is that right? y is equal to one-half x squared is going to be this wider graph. If we had y equals one-fourth x squared, it would make it even more wide as we see it here, but it would still pass through the origin, okay? Now, notice now we have another set of graphs on this picture, namely those which are concave down. And looking at, say, this middle solid line here, who then can give us the equation, as we have it here, of the solid line? If this one up here is y is equal to x squared, what then is going to give us, uh, uh, what equation then is going to give us this graph in the downward direction? And Rick? Y equals the opposite of x squared. Y then is going to be the opposite of x squared, all right? And now let's look, say, at the narrower graph, which is concave down, that one which is inside here. What then would be the equation of, uh, of this graph as we see it right here? Somebody else? Uh, Peter? Uh, y equals negative 2x squared. Y then is going to be equal to a negative 2x squared. And of course, what then can one say about the outer uh, graph coming in a downward fashion as we see it here, Steve? y equals negative one-half x squared. y then is going to be equal to negative one-half x squared. Now notice in each case we have here this opposite symbol. And uh, thinking of our coefficient of a, if the number a were is equal to one, that's y is equal to x squared, which is this graph here. If a is two, it then is going to make it a bit more narrow. If a is the number between zero and one, it's going to make it a little bit wider. Now if a is negative, of course, it's then going to take, say, y is equal to x squared and uh, flip it, so to speak, across the x-axis, and then it's going to give us this graph, which is concave down. And similarly, uh, the graph of y is equal to negative 2x squared would be to take the one y equals 2x squared and flip it over the x-axis, and we have y equals negative 2x squared. So, in fact, the number a out front, as we see it here, the coefficient of x squared, is then going to determine whether our graph is what? concave, what if a is positive, if a is greater than zero, the graph is going to be what? Concave uh, up. And if it's then going to be a negative number, it's going to be what? Concave down. down. Of course, since if it is concave down, what then can we say about the uh, vertex point? Is it going to be a, a Steve? It's then going to be a maximum, all right? Well, let's try to generalize this idea, taking into consideration what we have already done here in picture number two, and what we have just said about this number a. Here we have a graph in which we ha it happens to be concave down, and it passes through uh, y is equal to k here at the vertex point. And who then can give us a generalization of this graph as we see it right here? And uh, we don't know what the number a is, but what then can we say? Give us a, a, a general form in which we may write the graph of this. Steve? Y is equal to negative one-half, I think it is. Well, without trying right, to come up with a, a specific then. number, a how about just A? Let's just right. call it A. Negative okay? A. If I write simply A times uh, what? X, X squared, squared plus K plus k, what then must we say about the number a from the picture as we see it here? It's negative. then going to be what? A negative number, all right? Now, notice now we have uh, a constant here of a times x squared, in which this number a then is going to affect the concavity of the graph and also its, uh, its narrowness or wideness of the graph. And now the number a, of course, is then going to translate it vertically, all right? Let's look now at a third idea. And here we have in picture number five, a graph in which the equation is y is equal to the parentheses x minus three, the quantity squared. Now notice what the effect of this number three does, and that moves the graph in a horizontal fashion. Now the fact that it's x minus three translates the graph three units to the right. Now what then is the equation of our axis of symmetry as we see it right here? What's the equation of this line? 
And, uh, well, there's a vertical line passing through 3. Bill? X equals 3. X, then, is going to be equal to 3. Is that right? Now, our vertex point, then, is going to have coordinates of what? Instead of at the origin, as we have it in the past, or else on the y-axis, it's going to pass through what point? It's going to be 3, zero. three comma 0. OK? And notice now, uh, perhaps there occasionally will be some confusion, but if you think in terms of x minus 3 is equal to 0, all right, what number will make x minus 3 0? And uh, you say, well, x minus 3 is equal to 0. x then, of course, is equal to 3. And that then is going to be a translation to the right uh, three units, as we see in this picture. Well, let's now look at another example. Here we happen to have a curve which is translated to the left four units, and notice the pattern is x plus 4 the quantity squared. Again, if you ask yourself, what number will make x plus 4 equal to 0, and you say, oh yes, uh, that must be negative 4, is then going to give you uh, your axis of symmetry in which its equation is going to be x is equal to negative 4. Now notice here, uh, the number a happens to be negative 1 half, so that's going to make it concave down, and it's going to be spread out a little bit. It then is going to have the pattern of x plus 4 to the quantity squared, and that has a tendency to translate it to the left four units. All right? Now, in the next picture, let's look at example number 7. Let's throw all three ideas into one example, in which we have a coefficient of a, which is 2. We have a number here, let's call it h, which is also 2. And we have a number k, which is negative 6. And in each case, each one of these numbers, you want to think of the pattern. In each case, each one of these numbers contributes some aspect to the graph, OK? Now, the number 2 is then going to make it concave up and somewhat narrow, all right? x then is going to be equal to 2 is then going to be its axis of symmetry. x is equal to 2. And the number negative 6 then is going to translate the graph downward 6 units, is that right? So in fact, our vertex point is then going to be what? At, uh, we come out how many units? At what point? 2 comma negative 6. The coefficient 2 tells us that it's going to be concave up. And in fact, it's going to be somewhat narrow. And you can go ahead and make its graph, which is then going to look like this. Well, let's now generalize this into one last example. Here we have a curve, which happens to be concave down. That tells you immediately something about the number a, which is what? Negative. What can you say? A is negative. The vertex point is at h comma k. And so therefore, the axis of symmetry here will have an equation what? x then is equal to h. h. And now who then would like to write the equation for this line here in the general case? And in fact, that's exactly the name of today's lesson. And what can you say about that? Brenda, what can we say? But y is equal to a, a times x minus a x minus h all squared, all squared plus, k. plus k, where in this case, in fact, the fact that the curve is concave down, let's say that a is what? Negative. Less than 0. Uh -huh. And this pattern of a times x minus h the quantity squared plus k is going to be quite an important one. And it's going to enable us to make the graph of a parabola rather quickly, in which the number a then is going to determine concavity. The number h then is going to give us an axis of symmetry, and the number k then is going to translate the curve in a vertical fashion. So let me give you your homework assignment, and this will give you an opportunity to work on some of these. This will be a